Hey, it's Tim here. Today we have something slightly different. We've got a special unboxing and we also have an interview at the end of it. To find out more, as ever, let's get stuck in. Okay, so uh, <laughs> this requires a bit of an explanation. Um, essentially, this is the combination in a ton of videos that I haven't got out uh, and the things that I wanted to share, but I just didn't get around to doing them properly. So um, in this video, we're going to unbox the YouTube uh, thing that came. Here it is. It's on the table. We're going to unbox it. I've kind of already opened it, so I know what's in it, but I'm going to sort of walk you through what's in it. And then I'm also going to take a look at the merch Tableau sent for Tableau Visionary 2024. Uh, and then after that, what I've done is I've taken an interview I recorded with Sophie Sparks. Um, she does these amazing data visualizations whilst an event is going on. So she did one during an interview that she was doing with me. We did this in November 2023. And yes, I am that bad. I haven't gotten the video out until now. So this felt like the most appropriate video because in that interview, we talked about the history of the channel, how we got to where we got to, and essentially how I think of the channel, which I think might take a lot of people by surprise because what you see and actually what I make uh, doesn't actually correlate much with the way I plan and strategize the content on the channel. And it's kind of had to get to that point now because um, A, YouTube punishes you if you don't do that stuff. And then secondly, I'm still trying to balance off this, um, you know, balance you have to strike on YouTube, which is to, you know, give people the content they want whilst also creating content that really gets out and reaches people. There's kind of a balance you have to strike. So that's why you've seen a whole mix of different types of content in the last few months, just to try and create that balance and to try and keep that healthy. Anyway, I go into it way more in the interview to kind of uh, give you some background, but let's first start off with the unboxing of the YouTube plaque. Now, in order to do this, I have a camera dangling above my head and I have to be honest with you, I'm a little bit nervous because if it falls, it's going to fall right into this mic, probably take it out entirely and take out the lens that's up there. But if I if I keep looking up, it's because I'm worried about the camera. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that I position this in the way. And I think in order to get this to work, I have to move the mic out of the way. So if I just move the mic here, um, we're going to I'm going to try and talk loudly so you can kind of hear me or maybe I didn't think this through at all, did I? Because <laughs> if I move the mic out of the way, then you can't hear me. So we're going to have to do something different. What, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my um, voice memos app. That's literally what I have to resort to. So let's get the voice memos app. Um, I really didn't think this through. I needed my lapel mics, but hey, we don't have that with us. So I'm going to leave my phone recording over there so we can get some sort of room audio. And here it is. So. This is what you get. Um, nice package. Um, as soon as you cross 100,000 subscribers, what they do is they send you a little notification. They actually verify that you've done it legitimately. There's a little verification process. That takes about a week. Once you get verified, you get a form. You fill in the form and off it goes to a company. This company is called Society Awards and they make the plaques for YouTube. Uh, there's two types of plaques. There's a silver plaque and the gold plaque. The gold plaque is for a million. The silver plaque is for 100,000. That's the goal I reached. So. Here it is. Um, it's a pretty normal package. Comes in a nice little box. Um, when you open it, you get a letter from uh, Neil Mohan, the YouTube CEO. It's kind of interesting because I don't think he really signed this. I mean, if I if I put this um, if I put this right on the camera, is it going to focus? I might be too close to it. So there you go. You can kind of see that. Just looking at the um, just looking at the just looking at the text, and you just kind of. Hold the paper at an angle, you take a look at it. I think it's been printed on. Uh, but anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, really nice touch. Um, I'll take a picture of the lesson, put it on screen um, so you can sort of see what it says. But again, it's just nice to have that. And it's a good reminder of kind of where you started. You know, your first hundred and now your thousandth and now your hundred thousandth. So pretty nice touch, actually. And it's nice to have something like this, I guess. So, hey, if Neil has actually signed that, then I've just jumped on that and I feel so really bad. But, hey, um, doesn't matter. Anyway, you take some little padding off. Uh, you put this up here. You've got the usual stuff. Now, there is something nice and cool about these. Once you get one of these plaques, um, because some YouTube channels work in teams, uh, there's more than one person working behind the channel, um, you can actually... Uh, keep this and uh, get in touch with the company. And as long as you've got the credentials that you use to get this plaque in the first place, you can pay to order more. So this is the first one you get, you get that free, but you can then subsequently request uh, and more plaques in the future as well. So that's that's kind of really nice. Um, I'm gonna put my phone in front of me so that it's a little bit easier to record audio. Um, so yeah, here we go. We're gonna take this out. And uh, this is it. 
And uh, yeah, sort of, it's very shiny. Um, I haven't actually polished this. I just took it off my wall and put it back in the box to show it to you. But uh, yeah, I'll put it up on this camera as well. So it's just easy to see. It's a very shiny award. Um, it's uh, kind of put your name uh, plaques on it. You actually can't change that. That's the name of your channel that gets printed on there. And you kind of have to make sure that you change the name of your channel like shortly before you get this, if you want something else to be on there. That's literally the only thing you can put on there. There are some people who try and make funny YouTube videos with really long names. And there is a character limit actually that stops you uh, getting that. So uh, there's a YouTuber who's done this famously to try and get the longest character on the plaque. Uh, and they've you know gotten multiple ones because they have a pretty big following. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the back, uh, not much more to it. Um, but you know, this is probably made out of like uh, wood uh, and it's got a metal sort of aluminum casing just to give it that sort of premium feel, but it's pretty light. It's not like a solid chunk of metal, um, but yeah. Um, so this is pretty cool and you've probably seen it in the background. So it actually lives over here. If I sort of I take my phone with me so you can still hear me, um, kind of lives over here. So let's see if we can put this on right. No, nope, I can't do that right. There we go, that's it. There we go, that's where it lives. So um, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much it. That's uh, it's a YouTube award. It's pretty nice. Um, I'm going to keep this other stuff. I think it's uh, it's good to have. I'll just keep the box. You know, if you're going to move house or something, this is a good way of doing it and uh, keeping it in something that's important. And so, yeah, uh, that's what that's what that is. Now, the other thing I'm going to unbox, I'll put this to one side, is some merch from Tableau. Now, Tableau sent across the 2024 Visionary merch. Uh, let's see if that's on screen. Yeah, it is. I'll put this over here let's just put that over there i've got to be careful where i put it because i don't want it it's just going to catch sounds from the table so um this is the i'll put this to this camera this is the uh, visionary uh, stone it's a uh, pretty pretty cool right like it's nice little nice little color the previous ones are just behind me over here you can just see them over there so we had a green one last time, 2024. This one's got a bit of a purple hue. It's essentially a slice out of a rock. Um, and the shipping label is kind of funny. The shipping label came with the prices of all of these. So I can reliably tell you that these are about $5. So <laughs> it's kind of a funny little thing. <laughs> but it means a lot to people who have it. That's the most important thing. It's not what it's worth. It's, it's what it means to the people that have it, right? So um, that is uh, the YouTube, um, no, sorry, the Tableau Visionary uh, slab. It did used to be a rock. There, there used to be something called a Zen Master. We don't use that term anymore. So we use the Tableau Visionary uh, moniker as it is. So that's that's it. And then the logo pretty much gets ported onto pretty much everything else. So this is the uh, this is a can cooler. I thought it was a coffee cup. So basically you take out this top thing, you put your can in there and then you start drinking and that's pretty much it. Um, you put the can thing back and then it calls your can of Coke or whatever it is. I don't drink, so that's going to be mostly what it is. This is a little holder for your plaque, so you can uh, put that in there like that and then put it behind you as the ones behind me are put. Um, and then the very last thing is a uh, towel. I've got a nice little towel, very nice towel actually. I'll hold this up to screen, now uh, you can see, very nice, nicely printed. I, I'm just going to use this as decor really in the background. So I think you might have seen um, that I put it on my shelf uh, in a previous video. So that's that's what I'm going to use it for. Very, very nice. I've actually got a few of these kind of towels and scarves and tablets. It's building quite a collection. And then I've got this massive beach bag. Um, if you're wondering why beach bags and everything to do with surf, well, um, Tableau Conference is in San Diego. Um, you probably can't hear me now. Uh, Tableau Conference is in San Diego. So. Um, that's what this is for, essentially. This is to kind of get all of that um, stuff. You can turn up to you know, San Diego with lovely merch and this arrived before heading out. So uh, I think that was the idea. Take this with you, enjoy the summer, enjoy the break. Anyway, that's pretty much it. So um, all that said, that's all the stuff I wanted to show you. Nothing uh, incredible there. Um, just just some just some stuff I should, really should have showed you ages ago and some stuff that arrived sooner. Um, Next up, we've got the interview with Sophie now. Sophie also made an amazing data visualization that is sort of uh, handcrafted, as it were. So I'll, I'll, I'll put that as a thumbnail of this video so you've already seen it. And um, yeah, in this interview, it's about 30 minutes long. She just talks through the history of the channel. And uh, yeah, we, we go on to talk a bit about um, what's next, some of the challenges. And it's dated in November 23, but a lot of it's still relevant. So go ahead, check it out, and I'll catch you in the next one. Hi, Tim. Thank you so much for letting me interview you today. No so I can see your, uh, I'm sure everybody, this 
knows you already, Tableau Tim. Um, I know you because I've also <laughs> worked with you. So I, I knew you <laughs> as Tim before knowing you as Tableau Tim. And in the background, I see your amazing gold jacket there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so this has been quite quite a year for you uh, with uh, Tableau Visionary, um, official name for gold jacket. Exactly that, gold jacket, golden hoodie, goldie, whatever the people want to call it. But yeah, just a hoodie. <laughs> Gold, golden jacket wearer. Um, yeah. I thought it'd be a, a great to catch up, have a chat with you and learn a little bit more about Tableau, the history of Tableau, Tim what you're yep. doing now and what you want mm -hmm. to focus on in the future. And while yep. I'm asking you these questions, I'm going to try and draw all of this. So by the end, Amazing. you'll have a visual representation of everything we talk about. Amazing. Does that sound cool? So sounds to, perfect. to get started, um, tablet, most people who know you, probably only started watching in the last few years. Can you take me through history? Because I did a sneaky oldest video first on your YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, can you yeah. tell me a little bit about the history of Tableau Tim? Absolutely. It's crazy. What you just said there is actually not correct. Most people who know me only know me from this year. <laughs> ah. That's that's sort of like how, how skewed the the YouTube analytics are, if that makes sense. So um, I started back in, well, my very first video was ages ago. It was not even Tableau related. Um, I can't even remember the exact year, 2011, 20, you know, some really, really long time. Um, and my first Tableau videos were probably five years ago, six years ago. And, um, the majority of my videos or the majority of the videos that people have watched are probably from the last two years, maybe three years, depending on some of them. And the majority of my followers and subscribers and the people who watch my channel now daily are from the last year to eight months. So most of my followership is recent more recent than probably the length of time that um, the channel suggests it's kind of like a really weird um <laughs> it's a really weird uh thing I, I think youtube has this sort of compounding effect so the videos i made four years ago if i got them right they're still performing well today and people watch them today as if they've discovered them and i've made them today so that's sort of a, the strange dynamic that kind of youtube plays so um yeah we're, we're 450 videos in now so um some of those are probably out of date, but the majority of them are hopefully still helping people. And that's, um, that's sort of the, uh, <laughs> that's sort of the fun thing about it. I can go back and reflect on stuff. And the hard thing now is actually making videos today that perform as well as the old ones, because, um, the old ones have had time to gain a big followership. So YouTube recommends them again and again and again, whereas I think I make better videos today but YouTube doesn't recommend them as much because of course they are still growing in, 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 in usage. So there's only one video I made this year that made it into my top 10 of all videos, um, for context. So that's, that's super hard to do. <laughs> that's, I mean, I mean, that's how algorithms work, but it also, right. I, I guess you're putting things in the bank for a few years in the future. Now these videos <laughs> yeah. that have time, you know, shouldn't the algorithm keeps them working the same way. Um, yeah, that's, uh, so, and you said you started the first few ones you did, um, mm -hmm. weren't about Tableau. So how did you start the, the channel? If it wasn't, you know, wasn't, I guess, 2010, was Tableau around yeah. 2010? It was, that would have been like, it was, founding. it was Tableau's 20 years old, but it, it just, I, I wasn't anywhere near, uh, analytics or even Tableau. The first, the first videos I made. Um, the first one was actually about how to do a drop caps in print design. Do you know what they are? They're, they're kind of the, um, you know, in, in a book, the very first word is sometimes larger than the rest of the paragraph. Yeah. Yeah. That is essentially a drop cap. Yeah. And I made a tutorial on how to do that in Adobe InDesign. Um, Adobe InDesign had a course on something which was at the time called lynda.com. And I found it really powerful that I was able to go online, watch a, watch a course as an not as a professional and get professional skills that I then used later to do magazine design. And so I actually took a subscription to lynda.com like 
that summer and made a ton of ton of different pieces of content um and that video got 80,000 views over over four or five years that was crazy at the time because back then youtube wasn't even <laughs> you couldn't make a living off youtube but if i was if i'd kept on doing that those kind of view counts <laughs> i could have had a very different uh, life but i stopped at one video and i never picked it up again <laughs> so that's uh, a shame um and then i made another video about a, a web cms system called django and it's used on lots of big websites uh, tablet used it once at least i think um that was pretty 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 interesting how to install it and set it up and then i made a video about tableau largely through work um you know where we were working together um i started doing videos on content uh, layout containers sorry and then i stopped and started a couple of times um went to accenture i made a few more videos there and um, stopped again time commitment was always difficult and the production was always the hard thing and then eventually in 2019 i think uh a few things aligned. I finally had the equipment to edit the videos fast and easily and sort of express myself creatively. Um, I had a vision for what I could make videos about in a consistent way that wouldn't sort of get too demanding. And then, um, yeah, I managed to put it all together. So I kind of listed out 20 videos that I was going to make mostly about new, new features in Tableau. So I didn't have to think too hard. And then after that, I decided to tackle an explainer on what Tableau is, because those first videos were kind of me just getting comfortable with, with, with the process. And then I finally decided, right, I'm going to make this video I wanted to make explaining what Tableau is so that I can send it to my mom and hopefully she'll understand what I do for a living. <laughs> and, it's actually uh, a really good yeah, that idea. Was, that, that, was a, <laughs> that was a pivotal, that was a pivotal video because I had a vision. I had it for a long time. I didn't have the skills. Um, I've written a blog post about how I made it and I kind of, took a week out of work and I learned the skills. I made the video, I edited the video, narrated the video, did a storyboard, um, did it all on Procreate. I think you're using Procreate right now. So yeah, did it in the same app and um, uh, time-lapsed it and then exported it to Premiere Pro and then we made a video. So what year was that in? Uh, 2019. So that, that video was in 2020, but this was 2019 when I planned it all. So 2019 was like the, would you say it's like the pivotal year that yeah, when yeah. things went from being like bubbling along to being like yeah. full on. Yeah. Um, there's actually a reason which you might know, not know, but there's a reason which is I was supposed to go to a certain city in another country uh, as part of uh, the organization we both worked at. I can't really reveal too much, but you'll know exactly what I mean. And um, we found out I was going to have my son. So I decided not to go. <laughs> it's a pretty good reason not to go. And then uh, uh, I was kind of like, well, this is what I was going to do. This, that, like, I needed something new, something I, I was kind of hoping to really make an impact and, and helping people learn Tableau. And I was like, okay, let's do this instead. And um, yeah, that, that was it. That's pretty cool. And that's a good, like, oh, that's really cool. Um, and you said you, yeah, that, a little while ago when you're talking about the uh you know adobe premiere um, yeah. and you're saying linda i also people know you as tableau tim but linda turned into the linkedin learning i believe 100 100 percent, full circle so i learned I, I got the idea of making videos from a platform called lynda.com lynda.com was the first online learning platform doing videos um it had like three instructors doing stuff on Adobe. There's a guy called Terry White, who is still, you know, f famous for Adobe tutorials today. Another guy called Geek McClelland, who did Photoshop and Adobe InDesign tutorials. Um, and so I watched their courses on Adobe, basically. I just, I just went through them all, um, obviously got them legally and then got the subscription afterwards because I realized they were hugely valuable. So, um, and then the, the crazy thing was that now just two years ago kind of went full circle because LinkedIn acquired lynda.com, then Microsoft acquired LinkedIn. That's a separate tangent. And then as part of the acquisition by Microsoft, LinkedIn got this huge remit to completely pivot LinkedIn learning, um, or lynda.com to be 
a professional skill based platform. And so with that, with that sort of big push, um, LinkedIn reached out to me, having made now videos for a year and a half. So at that time, I think I only had 15,000 subscribers when they reached out to me. So I kind of think it was a huge vote of confidence as well, because 15,000 isn't that much that they normally work with creators that are much larger, especially in the professional context. So, um, yeah, we made a course about Tableau, but I didn't want to become typecasted as a Tableau, uh, uh, educator. And so we made a series called everybody's introduction to Tableau. And that's been live now for a year. 35,000 people have sat that course on LinkedIn, which is pretty cool. Um, about 1500 sit it every month, which is nice because it's kind of timeless. It shouldn't go out of date easily. And I've got, I'm going to do updates probably once every two years to it as the Tableau platform changes. And I managed to repeat that with the Snowflake course. And the crazy thing about the Snowflake course is it's growing faster than my Tableau course. So um, you'd think Tableau has a bigger following, but actually it turns out that because Snowflake is maybe agnostic from an analytics perspective, anyone who uses a database might be interested in it, then um, it actually has a bigger audience in terms of data analysts. So really enjoying to see the feedback I'm getting from that. and. Uh, yeah, and I've slowly started making obviously Snowflake content on my YouTube channel as well to kind of mirror that um, trajectory. But it's been a little bit tough this year. I think for a lot of personal um, reasons, I've just really struggled to kind of find the time to do what I wanted to do with other to other topics. So um, I've actually brought on board a um, a contractor, as it were. Um, I can't really reveal who they are just yet, but someone who's going to be helping me with content production. So. They have experience with Tableau. They're very familiar with Tableau, which is super important, but they're also quite opinionated about content and how that should go. So um, together, we've got a really sort of ambitious uh, plan about where we're going to take the content. And when the time is right, I'll obviously share that with more people, but uh, that's going to potentially three or four X my output in terms of just being able to get through content. Because the biggest hurdle is planning. The second biggest hurdle is editing and actually making it is the easy part. I can get in front of a camera with my setup and do it. The hard bit is all of the stuff that comes before and after. So um, in February, maybe we'll get an editor. And then <laughs> I think people will notice uh, the pace of the channel and the content we're putting out. Um, maybe get to a point where we can put out three videos a week consistently every 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 week of the year. So that would be amazing. Yeah, That would be very cool. And that's yeah, a big, yeah. that's a, yeah, big push, especially you said your uh you know 2019 was when you decided to give this a go because you found <laughs> yeah. out you guys were pregnant so you've got <laughs> a small kid <laughs> um so yeah it's, it's true it's true there is like there are times where you have to balance life and that's kind of why the um the output's inconsistent like sometimes i go a month without putting anything and it's just, it's just because of things like that you know i'm i'm still got a job i'm still working full time as well as doing this so uh, unfortunately it's funny, I kind of figured out how big would the channel have to be for me for me to be able to do this full time. And the number is something crazy like 800,000 subscribers in order for the YouTube and all the non YouTube benefits of how this all works to actually make economic sense to be able to do it feel full time. But Tableau never Tableau will never get that like, like if Tableau ever, <laughs> if anyone ever makes a million person YouTube channel with just Tableau, that's incredible, but I'm not sure it's possible. So you have to broaden that to other, other technologies. Um, there are so many more interesting things on YouTube. Let's put it that way. <laughs> oh, very cool. And a big push there for anyone who wants to share this afterwards, helped him get from Let's get to a million, <laughs> get to a million, a million subscribers. It's a bit unrealistic. So, yeah. Um, but you know, it's a, uh... we can get there small steps. Yeah. And so what uh talking about sort of following on from saying like moving on there's yeah. so much more than just tableau um out of those 50 yeah. ish videos you have on your channel right now um and this has been recorded on and the 20th of november yeah. 2023 so these will go up numbers um how many would you so you sort of doing tableau and would you define like tableau desktop prep server as three different things interesting so um would it all just be the, one big tableau it's one big tableau 
And the reason it's that is because um, there's, there's probably one piece of context, which is my channel has a niche and that niche is bringing people into the topic. It's not showing people how to do advanced things. So I don't do tips and tricks. I don't do, let me show you four level Tableau drill downs. I don't show you, you know, 25 minute classes on LODs. I do a crash course on the topic in general, Tableau, but I don't do in, I don't do deep dives into these, these things that often, because, um, what I'm trying to do is make sure that everyone can go from zero to 60 very easily. And also from like, um, uh, from a scale perspective, that's the kind of audience that I think justifies the time that I put into the quality and the, um, push of content that I make. So, um, you know, covering new features in Tableau, covering what Tableau is to covering the high level, um, you know, feature sets, but only ever doing enough to bring people into the topic is kind of what I do. So for that reason, I treat Tableau as one big bucket. Yeah. If you're just interested in Tableau, you shouldn't need to be super advanced or super technical to understand it. Like if you don't have a clue what Tableau is and you, you Google Tableau, I hope one of my videos comes up for you and I hope one of them is an explainer of Tableau. And I hope if you watch that, you maybe go, Oh, maybe I want to learn a bit more. And if you decide to do that, then there's maybe a four hour crash course you can do for desktop. There's maybe a playlist for Tableau prep. There's maybe a video of me explaining what Tableau server is or Tableau cloud, but you won't ever see me doing, <laughs> it's not true. I've actually done a Tableau server installation, but the point here is I'm just always trying to bring people into the topic. So that install for Tableau server is like the beginner piece of content for people who do Tableau server, right? So there's always something for everyone to start at zero to 60. Um, and that's, um, that's sort of how I think of it. So the majority of the content is Tableau. I'd say probably 30 to 50 videos are not Tableau. There are other technologies, um, that I've covered. So Snowflake, Autrix, um, particular DBT in the future, um, as well. So those are the four I'm going to do just because those are the ones I use for work today. And they're the ones I know about. And I think I, I like to teach from a place of authority and experience. So, um, <clears throat> once I've, once I've felt like I've done something for long enough and I can give something back, then yeah, absolutely. Um, we'll make videos about it. And okay. That makes sense. So it's like nearly all Tableau and then some snowflake and I'll, I might just pull out as a separate one because you have a, like a, a LinkedIn yeah. course. So that's kind of yep. like a, seems like a pretty yep. strong and then yep. like some other stuff, including yep. like AI. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the, the, the AI stuff is super frustrating because it's the most watched content on my channel. Um, if you compare it, um, if you do a comparison of all my videos since they've been published and you map them out over uh, the number of days since published, my videos on chat GPT and AI, like app, um, app perform Tableau by three or four, four X. Like, so what that means is just my, my, my Tableau audience is just so much more interested in AI than they are interested in Tableau, which then actually justifies why Tableau needs to put AI in their product, right? <laughs> because it's such an, it's, it's one of those things where I think you, you, you hear people say, oh, that this AI stuff, is it going to work? Is it not? But then I look at my metrics from a viewer perspective and people are super curious about it and keep, keep watching the videos about it. So there is some, something there that people are interested in. Maybe they're just curious to see if it works well or not. And maybe I'm a good communicator of that. Um, but Hey, um, I've kind of tried to avoid to make too many videos about AI because then the YouTube algorithm will sort of say, okay, Tim, this seems to be what your audience actually enjoys. Can you make more videos about that? And I nearly did fall into that trap by making a separate channel about AI that I, I decided not to carry on with. And I started to focus on just Tableau and chat GPT and how it sort of dovetails with Tableau, specifically my content and the product itself. So, yeah. Makes a, makes a lot of sense. I'm trying to, I'm going, I'm like, oh, should I do two bars? I was going to do, I'm <laughs> thinking about how, how I can show this and I was doing bars for each of them, but because Tableau is one whole thing, it's actually like two, two chunks. So mostly Tableau and then like hardly <laughs> anything else yeah. of anything else. Um, it's weird because I think in the future, um, what I'm really trying to do is make them all equal, right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, the content you make versus what people know you for, 
the, the, the statistics don't always correlate. I have one video about Tableau that has uh, nearly a million views. That represents a third of the people who've watched, the third of the views on my entire channel. So yeah. if I just took that one video and then all the other videos were about not Tableau, Tableau would still be the biggest chunk on my channel just by virtue of that one video. So if you take that yeah. one video out and you just look at the watch time in general, actually you find that the watch time is actually more consistent across them. Even though I've made less content about Snowflake and Alteryx and stuff like that, um, and they're actually quite hard to find on the channel. Um, you have to literally type and look for them. They are there. Um, it's quite hard. There is also a huge body of content that I've recorded that I've not released. It's sitting on the channel waiting to be published. So this is like a dynamic that people maybe um, don't get a sense of because in the videos, you don't ever see the date that I'm recording really in the, in the window. And it's yeah. the only stuff that's date specific is when there's a new release, but every other video where there's no new release. Some of those have been sitting in the back end of YouTube for like a month or two. <laughs> I just, I just haven't got around to kind of finding a window in which I can put it into or a time where I'm happy with it, or there's an editing issue and I've put it up and I've watched it back and I'm not happy with it. So I don't publish it. And you know, that, that's sort of a dynamic that happens all the time behind the scenes. But, um, I also make mistakes. I also publish videos with mistakes and then I wish I didn't put them out and then I take them down and put them back up again. But yeah. Um, there's always like a, a changing dynamic. So. No, that um makes a lot of sense. And so where would you, where are you thinking of going in the future with all of this? Huge plans. So um, there is a chasm between where I am and where I want to be. And by chasm, I mean, there's a huge gap, right? Um, and to cross that gap, there's two approaches. Uh, you take the YouTube channel down the sponsorship route and sponsorship opens up a ton of opportunities, but it also ties you down to commitments and timings that, you know, quite hard to do given I've got other commitments, especially my job. Um, or you go down another route where you take, um, you take your channel and you use it as a sort of springboard to do something that actually has the impact that you want to have. So one of the projects I'm working on at the moment is um, essentially a place where I can give people something that a lot of people have been asking for, which is a tailored course experience. Um, and people might think, oh, of course, oh, Tim's going to monetize this audience. Um, not, not quite, actually. It's just about giving people the opportunity to experience the content in a linear way. And I do this already on tabletim.com. But something that people ask for all the time is, okay, I've watched your video. It's great about this topic. But now that I've found your style and I've found your teaching and instruction style, can you give me somewhere where I can go and watch something that's got a high level of polish and it's tidy? My response to that has always been, well, YouTube is that. Like, I actually think my videos are as tidy, if not tidier than most people's course content. So <clears throat> what they really mean by that is, can you make it easy for me to consume this in bits over time um, in a way that I can show someone a certificate to say that I've done this course. And so that's kind of why I approached LinkedIn and I worked with them because I thought that could give people that sort of um, that sort of hit. But the problem with LinkedIn is that the turnaround to make courses, um, it's actually quite long. So, you know, to make a course, I launched one in November. We started it in April. So um, although the courses are an hour, because I have a really tight production system. Um, yeah, we, we have to start in April for a course that comes out in um, October, if that makes sense. So, yeah. you know, compare that to like my YouTube schedule, where if I want to make a video next week, I start it today. <laughs> and, and with courses, I think you need a lot more planning. So that's what I'm doing at the moment, setting up the infrastructure to, um, you know, I'm working with someone to set up the infrastructure to build a place, a website that's going to allow you to do that. Um, and, you know, we're going at it as um, joint partners, as it were, because they're good at the technical stuff and I'm good at the design and content production side of it. Um, and as part of that, I'm, I'm also helping other companies start their online courses um, as a way of sort of learning that. So um, what I'm hoping to bring is a tried and tested approach to making online courses and that are good, that actually work, but also I am using it myself to make a make an impact. Well, Tim, that was um, 
a really interesting conversation. So it's just saying it's like 9.30 and I know you, we've both got small kids, so yeah. probably both have like <laughs> things we need to do, like yeah. chores and routines, never ending yeah. laundry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, but there sounds like there's a lot happening in the future. So the last sort of question I'd like to ask you is what do you think is going to like what are you looking out for in 2024 do you reckon you're going to be focusing so you said before you know next year um, might be bringing on some more people to help you with yeah. um, content production and editing but you didn't say much about what you're going to focus on in those videos um, and where if for people who do watch your videos mm -hmm. maybe what you think would be the best bang for the buck for them so it's uh i'm thinking about this a lot because i need to make a decision by um by january because although we're planning lots of things i need to kind of decide where we start and what the approach is um i have 400 and something videos about tableau i've never had to up until now think about how many of those are now out of date and if they're out of date, then surely I need to make newer versions of them. And if I need to make newer versions of them, I therefore need to prioritize them while still covering everything that's new and everything that's changing, which it sounds like for the next three years, it's going to be a lot about Tableau. Okay. So in a weird way, I think my channel is just getting started when it comes to Tableau as a topic. And I know that sounds ridiculous. But I think in the next five years, Tableau will change as much as it has changed over the last 20 years, right? I think that's oh. almost inevitable just because of the moves Salesforce are making. And so if there's ever a time that someone needs to help explain that journey to people, now's the time. And I think unlike a lot of other channels, I'm always focused on what's new and where Tableau is heading. And I'm in a unique position to capitalize on that and really show people what's going on. So. It sounds weird, but I'm actually going to double down on Tableau. But the difference next year is going to be that I'm going to double down on Tableau and make my content more agnostic to other concepts in analytics. So whilst doubling down on Tableau, I'm also going to bring databases into that discussion. I'm also going to bring um, infrastructure into that discussion. And I'm also going to bring, um, you know, scripting languages like Python and R in the right places, in the right contexts. But I'm also going to explain general concepts that aren't unique to Tableau. So um, working with data, transforming data, data visualization, best practice. Um, I'm really going to sort of try and approach all of those, always from the perspective of bringing people into the topic and letting them go find the experts once they know enough about it to be able to search and help themselves. So it's a very, very complicated sort of thing to explain, but um, yeah, you know, the future for me has more Tableau mixed in with more things rather than just being about Tableau, if that makes sense. That does make a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, and I'm really looking forward. I, I, to be honest, like haven't really thought about where Tableau is going and what's happening next. So um, I'm really looking forward to to seeing what's what will come yeah. up then. If you, there's like you, you're the, the guru for the, if you want a Tableau update, um, you know, I, I don't, I, I shouldn't say this, but I'm totally going to say this. I don't even read that voice. Like what's coming next. I was like, I wait till Tim, till I'm like, I just wait till Tim reviews it. Cause that makes yeah. a lot more sense. Fine. Fine. Yeah. So, it's yeah. an interesting, it's an interesting, it's an interesting, um, it's an interesting paradigm because I, that there is, I've only just realized this, what you've just said. Um, my wife actually told me the other day. She said to me, um, you do know that for some people, you're the only source of information when it comes to Tableau. And I was like, no, nah, that's not true because, you know, I make the content and they go off and find their own stuff. And she was like, yeah, but, you know, she can, she can see the analysis, she can see the stuff. But she, she, she highlights to me that, you know, 50% of my people that are watching the videos are returning viewers. So they come back to watch something new. They come back to watch the next thing or they, they started something, they came back to finish. And I don't do anything for that audience. Does that make sense? Like I don't do anything for someone who's been using Tableau for three years it's to the point I made at the very beginning I'm about bringing people into the community and letting them find their own stuff. 
And by definition, I don't do anything for that returning audience other than keep them updated with Tableau. And I think there's a lot more I can do. Um, and I think I can do it in a way that Tableau can't because Tableau are Tableau. They have a marketing message. They have a, uh, uh, a, a message they have to hit and they've got people to please investors and owners and stuff like that. And Salesforce to please as well, no doubt. Um, whereas I can actually be neutral. I can be sort of passionate about the product, but critical about it at the same time and highlight the issues, highlight the strengths and highlight the weaknesses. And I think I've sort of hidden behind this wall, just saying, I'm just going to tell you what's new. And, you know, I've been using Tableau long enough to, I think, have an opinion and just be brave to share it. And sometimes it's right, sometimes it's wrong. And I'm open to people sort of critiquing that. And I think that's something that I'm going to start to try and challenge. Um, you know, there's certain features, there's certain ideas, there's certain concepts that would be great if we talked more about in the community. And um, I'm going to take sort of a bolder move and start talking more about them. And if I'm wrong, I'd love I'd love a see of people to tell me I'm wrong, and let's have that discussion out in public. That's that's sort of what I'd love to see more of. So um, I'm going to try and bring it to the community myself and, and see where it goes. <laughs> well, thank you. This has been fantastic, and we have a finished image, which Amazing. I'll send over to you. <laughs> um, looking cool. at the. Uh, <laughs> Where, where things have happened along the way um, yeah, yeah. and getting up to the last three years, uh, four years, yeah. three years plus this year, yeah. um, where you've, over the pivotal year in 2019 and the red line, yeah. um, mostly lots of Tableau, <laughs> some other stuff and a yeah. few bits of AI. Yeah. And uh, we're focusing on Tableau with your lapel pin because I locked yeah. it off the other side of your image. Yeah, there. nice. <laughs> But hopefully this will be a nice reminder of, of everything you talked about. And um, it's been an absolute pleasure, Tim. Amazing. Thank you very much. Thanks.